What's up YouTube? Welcome to a new video. This is episode number 11 of that triathlon life and the journey of becoming an Ironman, completing triathlons, completing marathons and lifting as well. But in this video, we're gonna be talking about and going through a day in my life of how I run and lift and bring you through the training sessions as this is going to be a very heavy and fast workout. of what gear I use and what I use so this is so it's like I said it's gonna be a chest day it's gonna be a long run and workout today so this is my post workout it's just the protein creatine run out of veggies and reds but and then the hat I'm gonna use um, Saucony endorphin speed twos I've been loving these out of the white pair and then this pair this is the pair I ran in the, in the Ironman and then carbs and BCAAs and then carbs and BCAAs. One for run, one for the chest workout because it's gonna be a solid two, two and a half hour workout. So definitely need to refuel, especially after the run. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what's in my bag. And this is the first workout or the first vlog actually after the, the Ironman Texas as we took a bit of a break. I went to California. Uh, met some people, met some friends, met some, met some content creators there. Super fun experience. Um, but now getting back to it, getting back to the training as we move into the marathon on June 19th and Calgary 70.3 Ironman July 31st and then full Ironman Penticton August 31st. So this is our first um, workout back. And we're just going to be doing a lot of lifting, running, biking, swimming, CrossFit, hot yoga, and all the good stuff. Um, so let's get into this run as we're going to be running and lifting today. So these workouts, this workout I'm doing today is three minutes off. So I get an easy pace. And then 10 minutes on by three. So it's going to be a really tough one. Um, these 10 minute ones are super hard. Um, so just gotta keep pushing through, keep pushing through. But this is my last, um, my last minute off the first set and jumping in to the second set. Heart rate's around 171 to 180. Just about to hop in to our last 10 minute interval at like zone four zone three i'm on my heart rate's going really high just because i haven't obviously done a workout in a while since the race um but we're gonna have to do it and i'm gonna I, and i'm realizing that this training block up to the august 31st is just gonna it's not gonna get any easier we're still pushing ourselves we're tr still trying to get faster it's not gonna get easier we're just gonna up the tempo and up everything to obviously get a better time and complete it the best we can so Let's hop into this last 10 minute interval and then cool down with the legs and then get into the heavy chest workout. Now, we go hit a heavy chest day. That's what I've been liking and really enjoying. I'm feeling a lot stronger and just better in general in the pool and the runs and the bikes just to do the heavy days with weights, because that's like forcing your muscle to stay, because if you just do high reps, I don't feel as strong, and I feel like my muscle like kind of fades away, rather than doing it really heavy, so that's what we're gonna do today, and that's a big tip in holding your muscle while running and lifting. I'm guessing around probably like 800 to 1,000 calories, so that was, Eight miles at a seven pace, seven minute per mile, 917 calories. So that was a lot of cows. And that's gonna bring us into the next point and 
being a runner and a lifter and trying to maintain your muscle, but we gotta work out before we eat. Um, we've been drinking uh, the carbs and the water uh, so far, but let's jump in to this chest workout. This chest workout, I usually do it like this every time. Um, I just like to stay the same for the for the workouts and just mix up a bit of a bit of other like I'd say smaller exercises. But obviously the flat bat flat bench one for me is very important or an incline flat bench to work on like the upper and the shoulders and then usually going into um, the cable flies one mid and then like these ones these are one of my favorite just for like just for strength in this area i feel really good and i feel really pumped up when i do that um, and then we'll do a do we'll do a core exercise and then hop in to incline dumbbell press and then probably push-ups or dips or see what we're feeling. So let's get into this progressive overload workout. Last flat bench. Last time we tried to get eight, we got 10. We got 135. Let's try 15. I think that'll, that'll be pushing me. 15, let's try to get more. If not, 15, we'll do. You know where we're going post-workout. Do this um, probably once or twice a week, but other than that, I just do it at home. Quidoba, finished my protein shake with creatine in it here, and then just sipping on water. I'm gonna go grab some Quidoba, and I do this, and this is a massive tip too for just running and lifting and uh, maintaining your muscle, is replenishing what you lost. Like, I probably lost at least 1500 to 2000 calories um, so we're gonna go get a bunch of rice a bunch of chicken and just enjoy and do a nice quick Q&A on my races and what's going to be next because we have a bunch of stuff planned and a bunch of races planned so let's go inside Cordoba So after the race, I got a ton of questions, ton of DMs on Instagram about the race, about Ironman Texas, and just about the event in general. So we're gonna do a quick Q&A and answer these questions because I know you guys are probably wondering that too. Um, question number one, what is the hardest leg of the race? It was the run because it was at the last, it was the run because it was the last event and it was a lot after the swim, after the bike, and my legs were juiced. They were honestly hurting a lot, but yeah, that was, that was the hardest leg of the race to run. The easiest leg of the race was the swim by far. I was so surprised of how easy the swim was compared to me swimming at Pan Am. Like I was only indoor, but now we go swim 
in a saltwater lake where it's buoyant. I'm wearing a wetsuit and I was just floating. I felt like I was literally floating the whole time. I was going by people. I was super impressed with my time. Um, and that was definitely the easiest leg of the race. My, fav my favorite leg of the race was the run. It, yeah, it was the hardest, but it was definitely my favorite just because the crowd was all there. Um, the environment was really cool. Running kind of with people um, because on the swim, you're not swimming beside someone. On the bike, you're not biking beside someone. But on the run, you're kind of like interacting with them, like cheering each other on. There's a bunch of um, like banners, um, flags, bunch of posters just cheering you on and yeah that was definitely the favorite leg of the race my favorite part of the race was definitely the finish like it was amazing the last I'd say 30 seconds when I saw the finish line when I saw that kind of lane towards the finish line that you probably see in lots of people's like Iron Man finisher videos, just everyone like cheering you on, all that work you've put in to like finish and like know and be confident that you did it, like you finished and that journey and that training led to, to the finish. Um, that, that moment was like a moment I will never forget. Um, and it was just, it was just amazing. So definitely the finish line for my favorite part of the race. The hardest, the, hard, the hardest point in the race was when I popped my tire, by far. I didn't know if I was gonna finish and it was just very tough. I popped the tire, I kept riding, kept passing people. People kept telling me, oh, your tire's popped, your tire's popped. And I didn't wanna stop because I knew that I would maybe not finish. So I would just keep pedaling and keep keep chugging along with the flat tire, but that was definitely the hardest point in the race just because I didn't, I didn't know if I was gonna finish at that point. It was really like demotivating while I was like sitting there, but once uh, someone came to help me and actually like got my tire all good again, that was very reassuring that I will finish and I will finish this bike and the race in general. How many waters did I drink during the race? So in the swim, didn't drink any because you're obviously in the water, but I drank um, one Gatorade Endurance Camelback bottle, about 600 milliliters. And then before just getting up to the race, getting up to the swim, another one. And then on the bike, I had about four in total on the bike. So that's about um, like 3,200 milliliters of Gatorade Endurance with two scoops of Gatorade Endurance in both. And then on the run, it was about two the whole run. So two plus four plus two is about eight in total. Um, what, did, what did I fuel with during the race? I only fueled with Gatorade Endurance. No gels, no chocolate bars, no nothing. Oh, I, I did have a bit of a Red Bull, like probably half a Red Bull the last say 10 minutes of the race, um, but that was about it for the fuel during. Um, the Gatorade Endurance just helps me so much and it's not it's not like regular Gatorade so it's not like as flavorful because that kind of makes my stomach cramp and things like that but yeah I just used um, Gatorade Endurance during the whole race. What did I feel with after? After they had a sick event set up like a bunch of volunteers that big tent they gave us a bunch of pizza I had probably like six pieces of pizza I think three cokes um, just to replenish all the carbs and all the sugar that I've lost and just like try to get my energy back because I was absolutely dead at that point. And then after that night, me and my mom went out for um, seafood because uh, it was Galveston and it was fresh um, seafood. Um, what did I feel with before? So the night before, I had a lot of rice and some chicken and then I was snacking on um, rice cakes after that. like going to bed. Then in the morning I had a plate full of rice. You should go check out the video if you haven't seen like the race day video, but it was a massive rice plate. It was like, pro I don't know how many cups, maybe four or five cups of rice, uh, just with soy sauce to get some salt in too before the race. How was the weather? The weather was perfect. 
Like it was absolutely perfect. wasn't too hot, wasn't too cold. It was just a bit windy, um, but that was but that was good because I was sweating. It was like hotter, I guess. So I was sweating and it was cooling me off. Uh, but the wind on the bike was definitely the hardest part because going out, it was just along the coast. So going out, it's pushing us there, and on the way back, with our kinda not fresh legs, like our dead legs already, we had to go into the wind um, and that was very hard on my legs. Um, but I was like, keep pushing through it because I knew if I'd stop, then my legs would get more tired and lactic acid would build up. But I just like kept going and I felt that my legs just got fresher as it went. Um, I, don't, I don't know, that's what I do in training, that's what I do running, swimming, um, lifting and biking. I realized that if I keep pushing and it's, say there's lactic acid in my leg and I just keep pushing and keep working, it'll eventually go away. Like on a swim, on a bike, like when my muscles are tired and I just keep going, it'll eventually go away. Um, but, the, but the wind did affect me. What was it like swimming in open water? This open water swim was my first swim ever in open water. Uh, and it was, it was, it was like, it was kind of scary, not going to lie. Cause when you're in the pool, you know, what lane you're going in, you know, you're going straight, you know, where everything is around you. Cause the water's clear. You have the buoys, um, you have the end wall, you have the other people beside you in their lanes. But then when you get in an open water swim, it's black. You can't see anything underneath. There's people around you. There's kicking. You have to pass people. You have to go side to side. And obviously when you're swimming in a pool, like at a recreation center or your local pool, you're not going to be turning and stuff. So that was definitely something I had to get used to. And I, and I did. Um, and like I said, like I said, swimming was the easiest, but, but it definitely worked out in the end. How many athletes were there? There were around 3,100 athletes signed up. And I think around 2,900 actually raced and then a few hundred didn't finish um, just because like accidents or um, like they didn't feel good or anything like that. Um, what happened after the race? After the race, you go, you finish, they take your picture. There's like a picture kind of set up where they have photographers um, to take a picture with you, whoever you kind of finished with and just just get pictures in general. Then after that, you walk over to the tent. They have a bunch of food, a bunch of like massages, people to actually massage you and like release your muscle. I got that done on my legs. It was, he literally just like pushed on my legs. Like it wasn't like he was massaging me and it hurt so much, um, but it definitely helped me for that. And then after that, you have to like replenish, like meet with your family, friends, whoever was there, other athletes. And then after that 10, you go get your bike, um, pick up your bike, and then make your way home or wherever you wanna go. Um, what happened before the race? So before the race, two days before the race, there was an athlete briefing and check-in. Um, one day before the race, there was another athlete check-in and a bike check-in. So you go put your bike on the rack, uh, kind of get used to the bike, where your bike's gonna be in transitions and where all your stuff's gonna get set up. And then, before the race, so say at like four to six a.m., that's when like the transition area is open around that times. Um, you go there, you get all your bags, you kind of put it in the transition area, get your wetsuit on, walk over to the dock um, in the, uh, where, where the swim is obviously, and then start the race. Um, how, was, how was the pre-event? The pre-event, the athlete briefing, everything they did with the tents, the food, um, the store, the store was absolutely massive and Ironman did a great job uh, with all their volunteers and all the people that kind of helped the event actually g get put together very welcoming to, to someone that did it for the first time and just everyone there um, with, the, with the people that were watching the athletes and everything. But definitely a big shout out um, and, a thank, and a thank you to Ironman organization and Ironman in general for welcoming someone that did it the first time and all those athletes all those people that were watching the athletes. Um, it was definitely a welcoming event and it was very, very well put together. Was I prepared? I feel like I, I yeah, I was, was I prepared? I feel like I was prepared as I finished and I was just very grateful and appreciative that I did finish. Um, I realized that I was very prepared 
just throughout the whole race, like I didn't feel like I was weighed down and I was like, I might not finish uh, uh, rather than the, the bike when the, when the tire popped. But I was very confident in myself and the training I did, the nutrition leading up to it, the n nutrition during it and all the planning I kind of did that I was confident in finish. Obviously I had some nerves before the race, but once I got into the race, I was like pretty confident. I was feeling fine the whole time, except for, for some things when my legs were burning and the bike was hard and the run was hard. Um, but, but yeah, I felt like I was pretty prepared for it. Did I feel like quitting the race? Um, no, I didn't feel like quitting the race. On the run, I felt like stopping, um, but I, I knew if I stopped, if I walked for a bit, then my legs would kind of seize up and get used to walking so they tighten up. And then when I try to run again, they cramp. That's what I did in my first marathon. And that's what a big mistake was, is I started walking for a bit towards the end. And then after that, every step I took for the run, my hamstrings, my calves were cramping. Um, so I did, I did want to stop on the run, but I didn't because I knew that would happen and it would just kind of make it harder for me to finish the race. What is the differences between the US and Canadian training and, and the, the weather in general. So I live in a climate where it's very cold. It's not very suitable for like triathletes in the winter especially. So I was just training on my trainer, in my kitchen, in my living room, and then running on a treadmill and swimming in a pool. So it was just those three environments. I wasn't in any race environments or race conditions like an open water or biking outside or running outside. Um, so that was definitely a hard part in training and I was, I, w I was nervous about that obviously uh, for, for biking and running outside as I didn't do that in the past for my training. Um, but, but yeah, I'd say that's the biggest difference is the weather and the environment to train in from Winnipeg to Texas. So last question, why did I decide to race this Ironman? You guys will have to wait for that question. We're releasing a documentary we're putting together with all my past some of my coaches, my family, my friends, um, just all coming together and really bringing this documentary to life and just explaining this journey and my transition from a hockey player to this Ironman fitness triathlete. Um, so you guys should definitely stay tuned for this documentary as it's gonna, it's blown me away. I get so emotional every time I look at a sneak peek of it. Um, and I, and I know, I know it'll be really good. So, um, definitely stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching the video. I can't wait for you guys to see what we have planning for traveling for races in the next coming months as I'm super excited and I can't wait for you guys to come along on the journey with me. So can't wait to see you in the next video.